Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... We're looking for this chap here. We notice his vans out the front. 52-year-old surfer Ross Hipwell went looking for some big waves and hasn't been seen since. He may have come to grief on his, uh, on his surfboard. His pregnant daughter fears the worst. I love you. I just want you to come home. I just want to hear from you and let you know that I'm OK. <sighs> And where is this father of five? Neil Ma was last seen in October 2007. He failed to make contact with his family over Christmas. After leaving his beekeeping job, he's gone into hiding. His loving daughter is devastated. Dad, please give us a call and let us know that you're all right. We love you very much. And a family torn apart by war seven years ago are about to be finally reunited. That is, until one of them vanishes. I'm worried maybe she might be there with somebody bad in my rip her or do something bad, or she was some bad friends that would influence her to start going to do drugs. Hi and welcome to Missing Persons Unit. Every year in Australia, 35,000 people go missing. But what is equally disturbing is that for every one person who disappears, there are another 12 who are somehow affected. Family, friends, workmates, the police themselves and volunteers. So in any one year, over 400,000 Australians feel the trauma of people who go missing. In this next episode, you'll feel the angst of some of these families, but then joy when they're reunited. It's 8 a.m. at the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit. Hello? Hi, good afternoon. Is this Ellen McGill? Yeah. Hi, it's Lee Hadley calling from the Police Missing Persons Unit. Lee is on the phone to the grandmother of Liberian teenage refugee Winnie McGill. She's been missing for five days. Was there anything that led to her going missing? Yeah, I was not here when she left. I was at work. In fact, uh, the sister rang me to tell me that she came from school and made the room empty. It's been seven years since 13-year-old Winnie and her sister fled to Australia with their grandma. They left believing they'd lost their mum to the civil war in Liberia. But two years ago, they discovered their mum had survived and was living in Canada. Since then, Winnie's mum has been saving up to fly to Australia to be reunited with her two daughters. But now, the day before she arrives, 13-year-old Winnie is missing. She'll be here by 8.30 tomorrow morning. Oh, Winnie's mum's coming to Australia tomorrow morning at 8.30? Yes. Does she know what's happened with Winnie? She knows. I rang her. So she's going to take Winnie back to Canada with her? Yeah, she wants to. Oh, OK. And how does Winnie feel about that? Uh, she was happy from the beginning, but I don't yep. know at this time why she has added like that. OK, well, we'll come and see you at 12. OK. All right, lovely. All right, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's quite out of character. Like, she's a young teenager. She likes to go to parties and hang out with friends, but it seems like Winnie has planned to run away. She's taken a large amount of clothing, her, her toiletries and cos cosmetics and that sort of thing. So it seems like it's quite planned and thought out and possibly someone's picked her up with her luggage and taken her somewhere. Across town, police are already on the road in the search for 52-year-old Ross Hipwell. We're heading up to uh, Merriweather to see Ree, the uh, daughter of the missing person, Hipwell. Ross is a keen surfer and threw his surfboard in the back of his combi two weeks ago. But after taking off, he hasn't been seen since. He makes regular contact with his daughter and uh, he has failed to do this. His mobile phone is dead. Uh, so, you know, we've got some strong concerns for him at this stage. And just as they arrive in the beachside suburb of Merriweather, where Ross lives, the office calls with what could be a promising lead. It looks like his account's been used on the second, the third and the fifth of this month. Around the Harrington area. Let's hope it's him and not, not someone else. 
All right, mate. Uh, keep us in touch anyway if you hear anything else, will you? Will do for sure. OK, then. Bye. See ya. Yeah, well, that's rather interesting. Um, at least we can see now that his account is being used. Whether he's using it or someone else, well, uh, you know, that's debatable. But uh, it sounds like it's been used up in the Harrington area. I'm not real sure where that is, but I think it's a little bit further north from here. So uh, we might sort of head up that way a bit later on and uh, see if we can spot him up there. Hopefully he's there. Back on the hunt for 13-year-old runaway Winnie McGill, police have just arrived at her home to talk with her grandmother. Hi, how are you going? Is it Ellen? Can we come in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So I was going to come out today and speak to you about Winnie and what's going on with her. She has been living, coming back, living, coming back, and I told her that it was not necessary for her to be up and down. Mm -hmm. She should go to school. So on Thursday, when I went to work, when I came back, everything of her was out of the room. Did she speak to you about wanting to go anywhere or do no, anything? No, no, no. She never told me anything. No. And then an examination of Winnie's room reveals she planned to go somewhere. So the, the amount of stuff she would have took, it would, would have been something that she could carry herself, like in a backpack, or would have it required like a n number of bags? There were two bags here, and she emptied the cousin bag from in his room mm -hmm. and used it also. So a few bags. Yeah, so yeah. I suspect it might, maybe she might come with another bed. I don't know. Yeah. Could she carry those herself? I don't know. OK. I don't know how she got it off. So wherever Winnie was going, she was well prepared. With three suitcases full of belongings, it's obvious she's not coming home anytime soon. Do you really think after not seeing her mum for a few years that she would have been really excited to see her? When she last saw her mum, was there anything that she would resent, be resentful towards her mum for? Did she feel that her mum sort of abandoned her, so to speak? We didn't know where she were. When they were walking in our country, there was a fighting in our country. Everybody went, you know, different, different way. We didn't know where she was. So you lost contact from We her. lost contact with one another. There's no small war. It's all about killing. And so you're running for life. Grandmother Ellen has established a new life for the family after the horrors of civil war. Now, the day before the reunion with her own family, Winnie is gone. She not make me feel miserable because she know from the time she was born she has been with me so I I, I miss her too. Yeah, I feeling bad. I be crying. In the search for 13-year-old Winnie McGill, Dan and Lee are talking to Winnie's younger sister, Georgetta. She's home from school so she can hold her mum for the first time in seven years. Winnie know about your mum coming coming to see us? Yeah. Did she say anything yeah. about that at all? Oh, she said she don't want to go, she want to stay. Was that something that you're expecting, like, to go with your mum, live with your mum for a while? Or? Yeah. OK. How do you feel about that? Good. Good? Yeah. But of course, without her big sister, this family is very incomplete. I want her to come back, for us to be one family and live together in good hands. And now, grandmother, daughter and granddaughter are about to be reunited. <laughs> But then, from joy to heartache, now they have to face the reality of their missing child. We're um, 
we're with the missing persons unit with the police and we're just here in regards to Winnie. Cause... Just came from Canada, I just yeah. arrived. So. Yeah. Did you, have you heard about Winnie not being at home? Going well, missing? it's, I, it just, how to sit in it. Yeah. Yeah. Have a seat. Yeah, definitely. A long trip. At Merriweather in Newcastle, police have arrived at surfer Ross Hipwell's unit where they're meeting his daughter, Ree. Gary Bailey, missing persons, and uh, this is Steve McAllister. Hi, how are you? Just come in for a little while. Yeah, certainly. You've heard nothing? Heard nothing at all. We do have some information at the moment where he may be. Um, but I can't tell you. Okay. Um, due to privacy reasons, he may wish to uh, just be away and doesn't want anyone to know who he is. You know. Yeah. yeah. If that's the case, yeah. I just would like him or to him to tell us someone yeah. just to ring me and okay. say he's okay. Yeah. You know, I'd love to hear his voice, but if he doesn't want to speak to me, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you can just tell me that he's okay. And you've been trying his mobile and that. Yeah, I continually getting message bank. Just keeps going on a message bank. You know, hopefully it might have gone flat or something, you know. Mm. So I don't think there'd be no real reason for him to sort of uh, ignore you, would there? No. Well, I don't, as far as I'm aware, I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what about sort of friends and that would... He's a loner. He's sort of a loner? I've contacted the friends that he recently mentioned and they haven't seen him in, in like a like, large amount of time, so... What sort of car? Uh, it's an old combi. Maybe in its 70s. Yep. What, what colour Colour. Green. Black and white checkered curtains in the back part of the camper. And Ross's disappearance has come at a time when family is so important, particularly to Ree. I'm ten weeks pregnant and, yeah, he, he'd be first grandchild for him. So I really hope that we find him. Missing person's daughter, she's a lovely girl, uh, most upset. Uh, we're now going to head up to Harrington and... Uh, See if we can find him, hopefully. Gary and Steve head further north to where they think Ross might be accessing his accounts. Back inside, Ree makes this emotional plea to her dad. I love you. I just want you to come home. I just want to hear from you and let you know that I'm OK. Just tell me that you're OK. That's all. I love him so much. Back at Winnie's home, her mother's journey halfway around the world certainly hasn't been the happy homecoming she'd expected. Would it have been a possibility that Winnie might have left home here to, because she didn't want to see you and be forced to go back to Canada with you? I don't know. Yeah, she wouldn't be worried I'm not going to force her to get to Canada with me, no. I know the law because if I force her to get to Canada, <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. No, no one's, no one's saying that. We just thought she might have been worried about seeing you and nervous that she... Yeah. Nervous that if she, she had to go with you back to Canada or not. Because we're just thinking what possibilities I are going really through. I really don't know. I really don't know at all. I really don't know. But the real worry is not why Winnie ran away, but if she's safe and well. Well, I'm worried maybe she might be there with somebody bad in my rip hall or do something bad, or she was some bad friends that would influence her to start to go into do drugs. That's my biggest worry right now. Yeah. Just then, Winnie's uncle Koji arrives with a lead. This guy, if you get to this guy, you get to Winnie. Okay. Koji thinks she may have hooked up with an older man she met at a refugee camp in Liberia seven years earlier. Lee only has a first name and a partial address in Queensland. Are you guys going to hold the person responsible? Because back in Africa, if somebody comes and takes your kid away, the police is going to hold that person responsible. Mm -hmm. Because your kid can't come to my house and I keep her in the house. Mm -hmm. If the older man, who at 26 is twice Winnie's age, has helped her run away, he could be in a lot of trouble. I don't know what's going through Winnie's head. And so we're going to go back to the station now and make some inquiries, the possibility that she might be in Queensland. So we'll follow this up and hopefully be able to reunite Winnie with her mum shortly. Gary and Steve have had a long drive to the New South Wales north coast. Their search is for surfer dad, Ross Hipwell. 
Yeah, we've been on the road now, probably oh, getting close towards four hours, I suppose. Um, then we've got about another 20 odd k's till we get to Harrington. I believe there's about three caravan parks in Harrington. Uh, we'll go around to each one of those, and uh, with a bit of luck, uh, we might be able to pick uh, the missing person up there and. Uh, He's got his vans and hopefully he's parked in one of the uh, caravan parks. It's sunset when they finally reach the outskirts of Harrington. Caravan park. Well, I, think, I think there's a caravan park here. Look at it. Yeah, that'll be one of the three. Hang on, look, there's that green van there's there. That's that, green that, van, that, mate. that could be his van. I don't Turn believe. around. Oh, I don't, we couldn't be that lucky. At the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit, Good morning, Missing Persons Unit. Lee Hadley speaking. Constable Lee Hadley is trying to track down the older man, 13-year-old Winnie McGill, is thought to be with in Queensland. Mum's pretty distressed that her daughter hasn't been home. She's been in tears every day, like she's meant to be over here on a holiday and catching up with her daughters and it's meant to be an enjoyable time. Good morning, Missing Persons Unit. Lee but Hadley just speaking. then, Lee gets this call Hi, from Winnie's mum. She tells Lee she's just received a puzzling text message from Winnie. She says she's very sorry to drop off for leaving and she was going to be home at any time. And I tried calling the number that she used for the text message and a girl picked up the phone. She said her name was Christina. And she was like, it was a mistake. How can it be a mistake? How do you know her mom is here? You know, why she have to lie and say she don't know Winnie? It's all very sus. It's a bit of confusion over who the message has been sent by, but we're going to get a copy of that number this afternoon. We'll be able to do some inquiries ourselves and hopefully establish who it's been sent from and maybe even speak to Winnie. At the Queensland Missing Persons Unit, Detective Jim Ryan is investigating the strange disappearance of 55-year-old father of five, Neil Ma. Neil was last seen in Mildura in Victoria. Prior to that, he had been working at a bee farm in Morgan in South Australia. He is a person who is a qualified pharmacist and he's the sort of person who can just about turn his hand to anything. Our concerns for Neil are that he has failed to make contact with his girlfriend, he failed to make contact with his family over Christmas, and all we'd like to do is just make sure that he's safe and that he's looking after himself. You're right to go, Carmel. Jim and Carmel's first step is to fly to Victoria to interview Neil's elderly parents. In the search for 13-year-old runaway Winnie McGill, police have raced to her home to examine her mysterious text message. Knock, knock. Hi, how are you doing? Were you able to get that phone number for us that we spoke about? This is the text message. Grandma, I'm really sorry for putting you through all this pain and I'm, I'm coming home any time from now, so you shouldn't mind looking for me. I'm fine, I'm coming back home on Tuesday. Say hello to Mama. I miss all of you. Bye. If the message did come from Winnie, it's great news but there's no real way to be sure who it came from. I told my mom I don't trust anybody with anything to tell me right now. I'm just looking up to you guys. We're doing our best for you. That's what we want to help you and get Winnie back. If she doesn't want to go with me to Canada, I am not going to force her. Mm -hmm. My mom is so she can steal my mom. In the Neil Ma case, Queensland detectives have travelled to Druin in country Victoria to interview his parents. Neil's dad hasn't been real well lately and their main sort of focus on things is that they'd like Neil to contact them, especially in the time of illness and when uh, the family sort of really has to rally around. How long is it since you've seen Neil? The first weekend in August was when we had our family reunion and we've heard nothing from him since. How was he at the reunion? Was he good? Did he interact yeah. with everybody else in yeah. the family? Yes. Yeah. Perfectly, perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. Nothing playing on his mind? Well, he, if there was, he covered it up very well. 
when he left here, he or was going down to Morgan to see a chap about a job in a beekeeping business. And uh, we sort of haven't heard anything of him since. All right. Do you know what sparked this interest in, in this beekeeping enterprise? I mean, it just seems completely out of the blue. Well, when he was living at Cairns originally, he did have a hive or two out on his little house, didn't he? Yes. We were dairy farmers, and I suppose he's always been country-minded. Mm. Yes. But, but you, you would think, knowing that, that you're not well, Norman, that he would have kept in touch after the reunion? That's what I would have thought, yes. Mm. You'll be 88 in June, so, uh, and I'm 83, so, you know, anything can happen any time. Norm has had three strokes, the most recent only two weeks ago, and his son's disappearance is not good for his failing health. Well, Norman and Val, they're pretty worried about Neil, as we can see by that. I think our best bet now is that we head over to South Australia to the beekeeping farm and see if we can track down his last movements from where he was last working. It's AT something. Mate? Ah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. There he is. It's now two weeks since Ross Hipwell's pregnant daughter has seen her father. But at Harrington on the New South Wales north coast, police have found his combi van. Yeah, that's it. Surfboard's in it and all, mate. Yeah. I suppose we better go see the office. Hello. Oh, there you go. We're looking for this chap here. We notice his van's out in front of you. Got him staying here. Oh, OK. This is this chap that's... Yeah. Ross, isn't it? Ross? Yeah, Ross. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, Ross. Yeah. He's got a van out there. Yeah, a van. combi van. Yeah. yeah. He's been here for about uh, three or four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not staying here, but he's um, visiting one of our residents, I guess. Well, that's all we have to do is just side him and just have a quick go into him and we'll be out of here, you know? Sure. So, he can do what he likes. Do you know where he's staying? In? No. No? Um, site. Hello. Hello, how, how are you? Hey. Um, we're from the missing persons unit. We're just looking for Mr. Hip, will we believe he's here? You're kidding. Has his daughter's been looking for yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, I'm so sorry. Thanks, my mate. You just... Yeah, yeah. yeah, put some gear on. <laughs> After hours on the road, Gary and Steve have found surfer Ross Hipwell. You can tell why I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. certainly not surfing. I can... <laughs> Be able to just come in for a minute. He's, yeah. He has been reported missing. He vanished go, two buddy. weeks ago without a word, leaving yeah, his frantic and home. pregnant daughter at home. Yeah, um, what's happened is that uh, your daughter's been extremely worried about you. She hasn't heard from you since the 26th of uh, April. Yes, my birthday. She's, yes, she said that. Mm. And uh, she's been trying to ring you, and uh, the phone keeps going on the message bank. Yes. Yep, phone's flat. Flat, is it? Yep. No charger. No charger? Expected to be away a day, been away over a week. Yep. And you're looking uh, well. Feel, I'm feeling good. <laughs> feeling, so we've got a great. Uh, we've got a poster there. You look a little bit, only a little bit different. You've yeah, got no glasses was, on. Your hair's a bit. Uh, yeah. What, what What I'd like to do is uh, ring your daughter. Yep. Um, do you have any objections to that? Knowing where she. Ah, no, no, no. Would no. you like to talk to her? I'd love to talk to her. All right, and you might be able to set her. Uh, I'd love to talk to her. All right. Put a mind at peace, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so sorry that. I've made her feel that way and just didn't even think. No. Didn't she'll, think. She'll be happy, let me tell you. All right, that's Ray Reed speaking. Is that Ray, is it? Yes. Yeah, Gary Bailey, Mission Persons, how are you going? Good, mate. Just, I just hope you've got good news before me. I'll put you on to someone, OK? Thank you. Hey, sweetheart. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm really sorry, darling. I didn't. I didn't even think. I didn't think. I've just gone away for. A, I just went. I just went away for a couple of days, and I just. It just went longer than I expected, and. I'm real. I'm so sorry. 
thanks for everything, darling. I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm not, I won't do that again, okay? Okay, right. I'll it's ring just... you when I'll ring you when you get home. Okay. Just put it back on Okay, just one second, someone wants to talk to you, okay? I love you too, sweetheart. I'll see you tomorrow. Alright. Bye bye. Bye bye, darling. Alright, see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 B
there's no phone number, there's nothing, there's nothing as far as the employee's concerned or the employer that issued it or where the feedlot is. With not much more to go on, Jim's hoping Neil Ma's girlfriend can fill in the blanks. So their next destination is Mount Isa, almost 3,000 kilometres away. Sydney runaway, 13-year-old Winnie McGill, has just turned up on a plane from Perth. Looks like her now. Although looking embarrassed and sheepish, Winnie arrives looking safe and well. Hey, Winnie. How are you going? Yeah. I'm Lee. This is Phil from the police. Hey. Just come to collect you and take you home to Mum. How's yeah, that sound? Good. Yeah. yeah? You all okay. right? Yeah, okay. A bit tired. Yeah. All right, we'll go down this way and get your baggage. So why did you go to Perth? Nothing. It's not for nothing, it's a long way to go. It's the other side of Australia. Are you going to talk to your mum and your family about it? Yeah. It's probably a good idea to sort some stuff out. Yeah. Did you have money and stuff? Yeah. Where'd you get your money from? Your friend's money. What did you say to them when you, you turned up in Perth? I told them that I came for a holiday. That you came for a holiday. But school holidays have only just started. You haven't been at school much, have you? No. Do you not like school? Yeah, why don't you go? After almost two weeks on the run... Okay. What year are you in? Year nine. 13-year-old uh, Winnie yeah. isn't giving away much. And the other one. This one? Yep. That one? Yep. They're big suitcases for a little girl. You have no clothes in there. They're just full of clothes. Lots of clothes for you. Oh, my God. And you took all these with you? If they're not heavy, OK, as long as we don't hurt ourselves. The time has finally you come... Pop in this side. ..for Winnie to see her mum for the first time in seven years. The mother who plans to take her back to Canada to live. At the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit... Hello, is that Mr Blewett? It is, yeah. Oh, hi, Mr Blewett. It's Joanne Campbell from the Police Missing Persons Unit. Hi, Joanne. Constable Joanne Campbell has just been handed a new case. She's on the phone to the nephew of John Power, an 85-year-old who's been missing for five days. Last time I saw him in person was um, about mid-November, but I spoke to him about uh, two and a half, three weeks ago. And was he OK, like he was happy and in good spirits when you spoke to him? But he was in very good spirits. John moved to Australia from Ireland after serving in the Second World War. A bachelor, he lives on his own in a Department of Housing flat. Has John got any um, medical problems? Problems that you know of? No, he had um, he had an eye problem, um, which was attended to. Yeah. But he's an incredibly fit man. So apart from that, he's fit and healthy. Very much so. Very okay. much so. Mentally, very, very sharp and aware. Yeah. Is there any other information you may have? Um, he sometimes goes to the Vikings Leagues Club in Dundas, so he has a group of pals that he meets down there. Oh, OK, then. Well, that's information that we um, haven't had. We'll make further inquiries and okay. hopefully find him soon. Great. OK, thanks a lot. OK, bye-bye. First of all, we'll go to his house, have a look around his house, and then go to the Vikings Leagues Club and hopefully speak to some friends over there just to see if they know anything about where he may have gone to. In the Neil Mark case, Queensland police have now arrived in Mount Isa to meet Roanne, who's been Neil's girlfriend for five years. Hello, Hi. Roanne. Hello, yes. I'm Carmel. Hi. And this is Jim. Hello, Jim. How are you going? Hi, good, thank you. Can we come in? Yes, sure. We're conducting yeah. inquiries in relation to Neil. What can you tell us? 
The last time I spoke to him was on the 17th of October. He sounded down and I think he was a wee bit lost. And then I said to, I said to him, have you got any money left? And he said, very little. And I said to him, make, make a click call and then I'll organise to get some money to you. Um, he didn't make that call and that's the last time I spoke to him. What do you think's happened to him? Where do you think he is? I think he's either decided to go bush and disappear for a while, or uh, um, something's happened to him. The father of five has been missing now for nine months, so Roanne makes this request. Neil, we miss you. We love you. If you don't want to be found, at least ring and let someone know that you're OK. We miss you. Back in New South Wales, in the case of 85-year-old John Power, police are on their way to talk to the neighbours who reported him missing. The reason I'm concerned is because of his age and he seems to be a social person. Uh, has lots of friends at the Vikings Leagues Club and all his neighbours uh, that have reported him missing, but none of them have seen him for five days, which is a bit concerning. John's been living here for 10 years and he's well known by his neighbours who all look out for each other. Hi, Scott. Yeah. Hi, I'm Joanne Campbell from the Missing Persons Unit. We just um, want to speak to you about um, Mr cool. Power, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, is there any other information you can give us about the last time you saw him? I just saw him going down the road. I, I'm not too sure what day it was or what, yeah. I'm always having my door open and seeing yep. him walk past and, you know, um, putting his garbage away or walking down the road or something like that, yeah. yeah. On Friday, he loves a form guy from the Herald. Yeah. And, you know, if I'm late going down, he'll knock on the door asking where it is. So you put it in your box here? Yeah, so nothing was picked out of there from since... Well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're still there. Yeah, I am concerned for him, because he's a decent old guy. I'm really concerned about Mr Powell, because he was told by one of the neighbours to let them know if ever he was going to be away for a while, and he hasn't done that. So we'll go and make some inquiries at Vikings and see if we can get more information there. The next step is his local leagues club. In Queensland, detectives have arrived back in Brisbane after three states and 8,000 kilometres. They're about to meet with Federal MP Bob Catter. Mr Catter, Jim Ryan from Missing Persons Unit. How are, How are you? you there, Jim? And Carmel Carl. Harris. There you go. Hi. Please come in and sit down. Thank you. Bob and Neil have been friends ever since Neil raised national fears about bird flu coming into Australia. He was sort of famous. Well, he was the person most responsible for preventing um, the cooked chicken meat from coming in from Thailand. It would have been dreadful if we'd had that avian flu. Hundreds yeah. of people in Southeast Asia died of it. Mm. Uh, so we were avoided all of those deaths and misery in Australia because of his work. Do you find it a little bit unusual that we're investigating him as a missing person? I'm quite amazed. I mean, I couldn't use any other word than to say amazed. He's a very pedestrian, ordinary, sort of a bloke, a very good community-minded citizen. Um, I mean, I just find it quite extraordinary. Neil's disappearance has left everyone who knows him lost for words. So Bob makes this plea for his return. Neil, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, if it hadn't been for your courage and intellectual determination, avian bird flu would have gotten to Australia. So your country owes you, Neil. You've achieved a lot for your country and you're a great loss to the communities that you've left. In New South Wales, 13-year-old Winnie McGill is about to be reunited with her mum after seven years. Winnie hasn't set eyes on her mum since she was six years old. And then, for years later, thought she'd been killed in the Civil War.
For Winnie, it must be a little like meeting a stranger. Thanks very much. That's all right. This is Winnie's grandmother. Yeah, Ellen. I'm telling you, I'm really happy. I'm going to sleep good tonight. You're really good tonight. Yeah. Happy ending. Thank you. All right, Winnie, we're going to head off, OK? It's nice to meet you. I hope everything works out for you and you're, you're a lot happier, OK? You talk to Mum and Grandma, your sister. Mm. They love you a lot, OK? Mm. Look after yourself, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, bye-bye. So Winnie's home now with a mum and a grandma, which is a great result. They're ecstatic to have a home, but Winnie still hasn't opened up much. She just seems like a pretty private kid, and hopefully the next coming day she'll disclose what's going on. Hopefully we'll be able to resolve some issues and she'll be happy at home. Smarter. Family now have to decide whether they'll stay here or move to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> In Queensland's missing persons unit, that's just a pay slip. It seems some of this, these papers are from early 2007. Jim and Carmel are now closely examining items they found in the suitcase that Neil Ma left behind on the bee farm. There's not a lot of interest comes out of the documents that we've just been through, it doesn't really take the investigation to any uh, great lengths, but there are some avenues that need following up. Now, at a dead end, Jim hopes Neil's daughter, Kylie, can give some new insight into what might have happened to her father, and maybe to give their wider circle of family and friends some answers too. Any idea that you might have where he could... I know it's pure yeah. speculation, but... I'd suggest it's not places he's been before. He'd be more likely to go somewhere totally different than to go back somewhere where he'd been. Um, I think his drive has always been wanting to be his own boss and to have kind of control of his work. So whether he was working in his own business or working in someone else's business, he'd try to make a good go of it until, you know, he didn't disagree... He, until he disagreed with someone he was working with or whatever, and he'd go off and go to the next place kind of thing. So he's, yeah, I guess in that sense, he's very, very self-reliant and that kind of thing. Dad, we know that you might be happy somewhere, that you might be working and doing well, but we just need you to ring and let us know and just say hello and let us know what you're up to and that everything's OK. Please give us a call and let us know that you're all right. We love you very much. And wouldn't you know it, after nine months, Neil did ring when he accidentally discovered he was listed as missing. And he was working too, on a remote farm. He just had to get away at the time and realises now he should have contacted his family a lot earlier. Today, they're all back as one big family. And a perfect ending, too, for Winnie McGill and her family. Oh, big cuddle. Winnie and baby sister Georgetta are now living happily in Canada with their mum. Thanks very much. And while Grandma Ellen has decided to stay in Australia, she hopes to visit them soon. Every year, over 35,000 people go missing. Have you seen 44-year-old Ian Daper, who disappeared from Mount Pritchard, New South Wales, in 2001? Or David Robinson, last seen in Darwin in 1995? And 57-year-old Christine Fenner, missing from Booyul, Queensland, in 1999? If you have any information, please call 1800 333 000.